When my husband experienced chest pain, I knew we had to go to the ER at Fairview Park Hospital because it had an accredited chest pain center. Chest pain isn't like a broken arm or a high fever. They treat chest pain like the serious condition it is, and they treat it fast. And it was a good thing we knew the difference because my husband was in cardiac arrest. Oh, I was fine. Now he is. Treat chest pain like chest pain. Choose the ER at Fairview Park Hospital. Hello, everyone. We welcome you today to a special interview here with Amanda Spivey. She is the coordinator for pulmonary rehab here at Fairview Park Hospital. And we're excited about the opportunity maybe to learn a little bit about it. This is something that's uh, not been around in our community for a long time. Tell us how long it's been here. Um, we've been here roughly around one year, um, mm-hmm. seeing patients for around eight months now. Mm-hmm. And we are really, really excited to be able to offer this service. We have um, pulmonologist Dr. McCormick, Mary McCormick, and Michelle Agarwal here with us. Mm-hmm. And um, we're really excited about expanding the pulmonary services here at Fairview. Yeah, such a crucial part of rehab for people who have lung problems. Yes. And up until this point, I guess they've had to travel in order they to... They have. Macon would be the nearest, at the, at the Coliseum would be the wow. nearest. Mm-hmm. Wow. So to drive an hour to get, or, or a little more maybe for some people, to get uh, 30 or 45 minutes of help right. a couple of times a week, you know, in order to even start, you probably don't even get that much um uh, as far as a workout in the initially because exactly. you're, yeah, you're rebuilding. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us about your education. I am a registered respiratory therapist. I graduated here um, at the heart of Georgia um, in 2004. Great. And um, so I have uh, had critical care experience. I've worked in that for roughly five years. And then I had the opportunity six years ago um, at the Coliseum to expand into pulmonary rehab. Mm-hmm which is a passion of mine. I love education. I love working with the patients, being a motivator, a cheerleader. And then uh, once it we... It takes a lot of that, I'll bet. Yes, Because, you know, when we first start working out, any of us, uh, when we're taking on something that's a, a dueling task, it's, uh, it's hard to do. You're yes. trying to... And you, you're, you're grasping literally for air. Yes, you and are. And you have to have somebody to encourage you, Yes, you, you do. And um, so once we had found out probably roughly around a year and a half ago that Fairview was wanting to expand their service here. Mm-hmm. And, of course, um, I had spoke with Terry Calder, the director of respiratory, and Kelly Cook our director of cardio and pulmonary Mm -hmm. and they said yes we're looking to expand this service so of course I jumped because I live here in Dublin and so to be able to work here in Uh, my community and to be able to take care of the patients that live here in our community has just been amazing I've really enjoyed it all right tell us about your family now um, I have a husband, Daniel Spivey, and mm-hmm. two little um, children. Uh, Walker is uh, seven, and he's at Northwest Lawrence. Uh, and uh, Lane is not quite two. She'll be two in March. Wonderful. So, yes. Wonderful. Yes. So you have extended family here, your parents? Um, my, I'm from Wheeler County uh-huh. and from Glenwood. And mm-hmm. then my in-laws live here. Um, Gary and Rosie Spivey are here mm-hmm. in Dublin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not far, Glenwood. No. Yes, that's that right. I, I love Lawrence County. We've always, my mother is from here as well. Mm-hmm. So a lot of of extended family yeah so you get the opportunity to come in here and encourage people every day and, yes. and help them build up their uh not only physically but mentally yes that is a huge aspect of this disease process yeah. is treating the patient both mentally and physically um, they have to be able to have that desire to want to improve their health and to want to do better um, and and finding out that they can do these things really helps them because at first it feels as if this is a huge mountain there's no way i can get there but yeah. then through the gradual steps that we do in the program they have great success and they're very very pleased mm-hmm. with their success and i guess each plan each uh plan would be individual it has to be because it is it is tailored specific to the individual patient some mm-hmm. patients aren't able to do the pieces of equipment and the things that we ask other patients to do so we tailor that specifically to them mm-hmm. awesome well we want to meet someone you have someone very special for us to meet today right yes audrey cook mm-hmm. audrey Tell- cook um 
Audrey has been with us. We looked back um, since June of last year, and she came in. Um, I had I've known Audrey's name for several months. Um, she is a member at our church, Dudley Baptist, yeah. and she's been on our prayer list because we knew she was needing a double lung transplant. And we had just kept her in our prayers. And um, then once she called and got the the referral to get into the program, I was so excited just to be a part of meeting her, learning her story, and um, meeting her dear, sweet family as well. So it's been a pleasure to have her in our program. All right. We look forward to meeting her. Thank you yes. for what you do, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are at the Pulmonary Rehab Center. And I happen to be walking with a lovely young lady, Audrey Cook. Audrey uh, tell us about your experience here at Pulmonary Rehab. First of all, tell us about uh, how actually you first had a problem with your, your lungs. And... Okay. Um, well, I've had lung problems since I was born. Mm -hmm. And so I was born, I wasn't breathing, and they did lots of tests, and they didn't figure out what was going on with me until I was about 13. And they think that my immune system attacked my airways since before I was born. Wow. So I've had a lot of scar tissue and... Just damaged airways and narrow and hard to get air in and out. So lots of different lung infections. Um, and you've been dealing that all your life. You've yes, been dealing with that all, all your my life. life. Wow. Correct. Okay. And so um, you've been to many doctors over time. Yes, and we moved a lot. So I've been to doctors all over the east side mm -hmm. of the country. Yeah. So where'd you grow up? Um, I lived in Michigan for five years, and then lived in Ohio for a couple years, mm -hmm. and then I lived in Rhode Island for eight years, and then we moved to South Alabama. And we lived there for a few years, and I lived in Birmingham, went to school up there, mm -hmm. and then uh, lived in Atlanta for a couple years, and then moved here about five years ago. Yeah. So you've experienced a lot of facilities, a lot yes. of doctors. Uh, <laughs> I have. Uh, yeah. And tell us how you find Fairview Park Hospital. It's amazing. I re had really never stayed here until last January, or January of 2014. When my lung collapsed, I had to be rushed to the ER, oh my. and I almost died, but um, they were able to get a tube in, and they took such good care of me, and uh, I stayed in the hospital for about a week, and I was just amazed at how wonderful everyone was. The doctors were great. The nurses took such good care of me, and uh, I have nothing but good things to say about them. I saw Dr. Johnson in the ER, yeah. and... Um, and then I saw Dr. Agrawal. He came to see me in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so, and he, I was just so impressed with him. Uh, so they took good care of me and mm -hmm. were able to get yeah. me stabilized. So, so your lung collapsed. Yes. Now, how did that happen? Is it just the nature of what you've been dealing with? I think it probably was the result of the year before that. I had been sick with pneumonia, nice. and I got a pocket of fluid in my lungs. Yeah. And so that went away, but it left weak spots in my lungs. Okay. So they think I just did. I was sitting in my room and bent over to pick something up, and just started feeling this really sharp pain on my right side. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what it was. My right arm started tingling, and um, I just felt like I had boulders crushing my shoulder and my back. And I was wearing oxygen at the time all the time. Yeah. And um, my O2 sat started dropping really quickly. So my parents had to rush me to the emergency room, and uh, they figured out what was going on then. But I had no idea, and it was terrifying. I oh. almost died on the way to the hospital. I blacked out. Where did you live? Here in town? I lived here in town, about yeah. six minutes away. Okay, great. So got you right on in and took yes, care of you. Yes, they did. Once you, you completed the uh, hospital visit, I guess I could say, and then they told you what? That you need to start coming to pulmonary rehab? Yes, I had been already evaluated for a lung transplant in 2011, mm -hmm. but I hadn't been to the point where I felt like I was sick enough that I needed to be listed yet. Mm -hmm. So I kept visiting them every few months, and they checked in on me, and I kept telling them I wasn't ready yet. And after my lung collapsed, I was ready <laughs> to get on the list, yeah. and they encouraged me to go ahead and start coming to pulmonary rehab. Mm -hmm. So um, I was very excited that they started the program here, because mm -hmm. otherwise I'd have to drive to Macon twice a week, and I was very weak. Yeah. And it was really hard. I was on oxygen all the time. Wow. I would be out of breath just walking in the door from the car. Lord of mercy. So it was a, a huge godsend to have pulmonary rehab here so I wouldn't have to travel because mm -hmm. traveling was exhausting. So how long have you been coming to Fairview Park? I started coming in June of last year, and uh, I came until September when I went up to Emory for my lung transplant. And then I was up there for about two months. 
before I was able to come back home because I was recovering in the hospital and then had to stay close by for lots of tests afterwards. Now, that was at Emory. And that was at Emory. Yeah. So you originally came here, got help, and then they referred you to a surgeon at Emory. Yes. Okay. And then once that procedure was done, you had to stay there for a period of time. Yes. In order to recoup. And then they advise you to uh, seek help through pulmonary rehab? At, yes, at some local. that was mandatory. They said after the transplant, you had to have pulmonary rehab. Uh -huh. And so it's so great that I had already been coming here and already knew all the people here and was able to just, you know, have an easy transition coming back to pulmonary rehab afterwards. And yeah. that was a huge help. And I can really tell, like, the more I exercised, the more I moved, the better I felt. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the more I meshed with the new lungs because when you get new lungs, you don't automatically feel great. I mean, some people wow. might, but yeah. I kind of felt like I had an alien in my chest because yeah. they were a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So it kind of takes some getting used to, mm -hmm. to so, just get used so to new lungs. All new lungs. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It is. It's a miracle. Yes, it is. All right, so then you started to come here for rehab, yes. pulmonary rehab. All right, when you first came, tell me who greeted you and about some of the people that you, you've met here. The first person I met was Amanda Spivey, and she called me and set up my appointment. She said that I think uh, Dr. Agarwal had given her my name to refer me for pulmonary rehab, and she is just the kindest person you could ever meet and so caring, and, um, you know, she is very knowledgeable, and she said, you know, anything I wanted to know about, that she would research it if she didn't know it and uh -huh. could, you know, do an educational session about that, mm -hmm. so that's been huge. Um, and then, you know, Kelly Cook is the physical therapist, mm -hmm. and she teaches the exercises. Mm -hmm. Some of the other people do, too, but I think that's, um, you know, mostly what she does. And mm -hmm. so she's been great. Yeah. And everyone's just been very motivating and encouraging. And, and so, so how long have help. you been coming? Uh, I've been coming now since... You said June? Since October. Well, okay. June, and then I had about two months where I was in Atlanta. Uh -huh. And then... I came back about the end of October mm -hmm. and have been back ever since then. I've had a few stints where I had to go back up to Emory and stay for, I stayed for about five weeks. And then I was just walking the halls and missing pulmonary rehab uh, uh, very much. And yeah. so do then you, I came do back. You, do you come over every day or a couple times a it's week? It's a couple times a week, yeah. uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. All right. For pulmonary and they monitor you. I see that we have uh, yes. your temperature that they're gauging. <laughs> Yes, they're um, looking at my rate. oxygen saturation and my heart rate. Okay. And um, making sure all that's good. And they take my blood pressure before and after. Uh-huh, okay. So they're making sure I'm not going to pass out or do all anything right. crazy. All right. And when we first came up, you had on a mask and you had on gloves. Yes. What does that matter? Um, for people who've had a transplant, the first year after your surgery, they give you a lot of drugs to kill your immune system because if your immune system's strong, it will possibly see the new lungs as a threat, as a foreign body. Wow. So they try to throw everything they've got at it to kill your immune system yeah. so that your body doesn't reject your new organ. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be super careful not to catch any germs yeah. or be around any sick people because yeah. you don't have an immune system to yeah. fight it. Right. So that's why I wear the mask so that I don't touch mm -hmm. my face mm -hmm. after touching other things. Sure. And wear the gloves and switch yeah. them out frequently mm -hmm. to yeah. try to prevent that. Well, I'm feeling pretty well today, so okay, I think you're good. okay. <laughs> all right, I'm glad. so all right, so uh, again, you came in. You've been here for five months. What was the first day like? The first day back after the transplant, or yeah. before? When you came here, the first day. When in I came October. here the first day. Um, I was on oxygen all the time, and they had to, you know, give me extra oxygen to be able to exercise. So I would, you know, everything I did. I did a very slow pace and, you know, just walking around the room for my warm-up. I, I, I think I zombie walked because that was about the pace I would walk. So, but they should totally have me for an extra just because I already walked this way. So um, so it was, you know, I was doing things, but I had to work up and uh, work on my strength. And it did get a lot better, and that was a huge help before the transplant. But I still had to be on oxygen all the time So, because I just, my lungs were not getting any better so but now they are all now they are yeah well you know they're they're new lungs so right, these lungs right. are great yeah and you built them up mm -hmm. through pulmonary rehab yes and that was a huge thing with the surgery they wanted you up and walking as soon as possible and so i realized how weak my legs were Ooh. so it was good that I already had been working on it beforehand uh -huh. to try to strengthen them because afterwards 
I realized my lungs felt great, and I wasn't getting out of breath. It was my legs would be tired, so mm -hmm. I just had to build up my strength and my muscles mm -hmm. sure. afterwards. Sure. So what would you tell or what do you tell people about Fairview Park's pulmonary rehab? Oh, I tell them it's amazing. <laughs> I know a couple people who have either just had transplants or are waiting for a transplant, and I tell them that they have got to come here because it is wonderful, and it has been you know, so great to have the support and um, you know, just have people who really care about you and really want to see you do better. And um, so, yeah, I highly recommend it. All right. So how far do you walk now? Now I can walk 30 minutes on the treadmill without stopping, and I can talk before I could not talk <laughs> and walk at the same time. Yeah. So uh, now they probably wish I shut up. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it, it's just such a huge difference because before I, you know, would have to – Stop and take a break yeah. after, you know, you had just to build a few up. minutes. Yes. Sure you did. All. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing well. And Thank we, you. We appreciate you coming over and letting us take a walk with you today. Thank you. Thank you for coming.